Hey, what's going on guys? This is Jason from MicrosoldingSupply.com and today I'm going to be going over the ZXW tool. Uh, I've been seeing a lot of questions in forums about it asking things like what is it? What does it do? What's so great about it? Uh, how do I get one? And I'm going to try to go over those as best as I can. Um, the ZXW tool, when you first get it, it looks like a little USB stick that you plug into your computer. Uh, what it does is it gives you access to a whole bunch of schematics and board views for, um, I for iPhones to iPads, so things like Samsung's and Sony's and a whole bunch of stuff that you wouldn't normally be able to get access to. Um, it's a bit different, it has advantages and di disadvantages compared to PDF, uh, conventional PDF schematics and board views that I'll be going over. Um, but overall, I've really started to like this, and it, it really speeds up my, uh, the workflow, I think. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and setting it up. So in order to set up the ZXW tool, you're going to need a couple of pieces of software. You're going to need first the ZXW software itself and you're going to also need uh, this program called 7-zip to uh, uh, install it and once you have downloaded it. So what you're going to do is uh, just go into Google, type in 7-zip, hit the first link and you're going to go up here and s uh, select uh, one of these downloads and go ahead download and install them onto your computer. So once you have 7-zip installed, go ahead and head over to zxwtools.com and you're going to see a page with a bunch of Chinese on it. And if you don't speak Chinese, it's going to be a bit hard to, you know, figure out where you're going or understand what really is going on. So, um, you're going to, if you're going to try to hit this English button, well, 404, good luck. Not there. So, go ahead and look for the characters uh, that look like this. Um, and if you hover over it in the bottom left corner, it'll actually tell you zxwtools.com slash download.html. And click that link. And it'll take you to this page here. Uh, here you're going to look for the most recent version of ZXW that's been released. So go ahead and look for a version number. Here you're going to see version 2.1, Black Blackfish 1.4. Uh, you're going to see a, a timestamp here, 2015-11-16. And that's going to be the most recent version of ZXW tools. So go ahead and click that link. It'll open a page here by do. And um, this is going to be more Chinese. So if you don't understand Chinese, it'll you really won't know what the heck is going on. If you try to click this link, it'll be like... It'll probably show you a pop up of, you know, sign up for our website and we'll let you do random crap. <clears throat> so that's not really helpful. Uh, there's no sign up actually needed. So what you do is look for this icon here, which looks like a little download, a little 25.5 megs uh, that tells you the size of the file, and you're going to go ahead and click that. And it might give you some CAPTCHA pop up. Go ahead and just fill that out. TD7G. And hit enter. And now you can go ahead and download the software. So go ahead and save the software wherever. You can see here I've already downloaded it, so I'm not going to save it again. But uh, once you have it downloaded to your computer, go ahead and open it in File Explorer, find it, and right-click it. Now go ahead and select 7-zip and select Extract Here. Give it a minute to extract. Now you're going to go ahead and open the folder that I just created, and you're going to see all your ZXW files here. You're going to see um, some doc files, a um, whole bunch of crap that really is not really helpful, but you're also going to see two applications, ZXW and Blackfish. So ZXW is actually split into two parts. There's a board view component called ZXW, and there's a schematic component called Blackfish. Um, because this is kind of like beta software, it is a bit buggy, and currently Blackfish is not really working for anyone I know. Um, so that, but that's okay, because honestly, this is where you know schematics do shine in terms of um, PDF schematics do shine in terms of uh, searching through them and getting as much information as you can versus you know looking at uh, the Blackfish version. So go ahead. We're just going to focus on the ZXW part today. So go ahead and. If you wanted to, you can actually, uh, like I did, I dumped this into my start menu here, down here. If you want to go ahead and do that, all you got to do is go to File Explorer, go to your navigation bar, type in percent, app data, another percent, and hit enter. Go to Microsoft, scroll down to Windows, select Start Menu, Programs, and here you can create a shortcut to wherever you're storing ZXW. And now you can go ahead and move this wherever as long as you have a valid shortcut in your start menu. So go ahead and now open up ZXW tool. And oh no, 
what do you know? Dongle not found. Well, this is where the USB stick comes in handy. So this USB, USB stick is actually a hardware key uh, that allows you to use the ZXW software. Um, without it, you know, ZXW won't run, and vice versa, without the software, hardware key is pretty much useless. So go ahead and plug that into your computer. Wait for it to load. Go ahead and open it up again. <coughs> so the first time you run this, you're going to see some options. Um, this top menu here is says it gives you the option of choosing the server. Since ZXW is a live update tool, it does uh, ZXW does constantly push updates uh, for new schematics, new board views, um, all sorts of new devices to it uh, all the time. Uh, right now, we just got the 6s and 6s plus schematics and board views, and that's pretty cool. So all of their stuff is pushed from a server, and uh, here you can select which server you want. So if you're in China. You're going to see People's Republic of China, which, you know, if you're in China, I'm going to hope that you probably know that. And you're going to choose one of the Chinese servers. Uh, but if you're in America, you're going to go ahead and choose one of these Hong Kong servers. So I'm going to go ahead with Hong Kong 1. Below it, you can select your language. I'm going to go with English. Hit Save and hit OK. And you're going to see very little English. <laughs> That's all right. Go ahead. Uh, since CXW is, you know, buggy like that, go ahead and close it. Reopen. Give it a minute, and there we go, English. And so, this is the ZXW tool. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at the interface of it. So, you can see here on the left-hand column, you can see a whole bunch of uh, devices. You can see HTC, um, Samsungs, iPads, uh, and uh, iPhones. So, let's go ahead and take a look at the iPhone 6, for example. And you can see now you're going to have the bottom half of the board and you're going to have your top half of the board. Um, there are multiple views to this. If you want to go up to window, you can select which one. You can select cascade, horizontal, which is what we are just at, vertical. Um, or what I like to do is I actually like to go full screen and use the tab key on your keyboard to switch between the two. So ZXW tool has some features built in. Um, searching, if, compared to PDF schematics, for example, uh, if I had an iPhone 6 with no backlight, right, so I'd probably go to the LCD connector, LCM, try to, you know, search through this. Well, I know where it is, so I'm gonna, not going to bore you with searching. And you're going to see LCD, board to board, um, backlight right here. And you're going to go ahead and zoom in on this. And if you had no backlight, uh, you always want to start with a filter. So let's start with FL2024. FL, control F, FL2024. And you're going to go ahead and hit enter in your PDF viewer. And it's going to take, show you, you know, where the filters are, right? Wrong. iPhone 6, at least mine at least, this is, uh, doesn't have a searchable board view. And this is where things like ZXW really come in handy. Um, so if I was to use the conventional PDF schematic to try to find the backlight filter, right? Um, you know, my top, part of my board is even cut off here, so that's no good. Um, finding this, the, the component would involve a lot of hunting around, looking uh, through all of this, you know, going FL2024, you know, looking over, hunting around, a lot of time wasted searching for, you know, now I just find, finally, FL2024. That's a lot of time wasted. ZXW tool, you know, if you want to find FL2024, you can use this handy search function up here on the top uh, bar. Go ahead and select, click it, type in FL2024, and just hit enter. And look at that, success, find FL2024. And so now, if I want to get a closer look, I can either use these zoom buttons here, or on my keyboard, the shortcut is Control Z to zoom in, and Control X to zoom out. So let's go ahead and zoom in on FL2024. Now to scroll, you can use either the scroll bars at the top and the side, or at the bottom and the side, or you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard. So go ahead and scroll over to FL2024, and bam, here's your filter, backlight filter. Now, another really cool thing about ZXW tool is um, if you do a lot of BGA re rework, there's, it involves, you know, removing a lot of IC chips. So, on the iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, what happens a lot is you end up with uh, no touch due to um, something like a bad uh, touch controller, U24-2 and U24-1. And wait, a lot of the times, if, if you remove these before, you know a lot of the times when you remove them, you happen to lose a lot of pads. And that's really worrisome, you know, losing pads is no fun. You, a lot of times you lose pads around here, pads around here, and that involves, you know, 
going down, seeing exactly where A1 is, you know, counting up or counting over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you know, finding out that's E7 or something like that, going over to the schematic, searching U2401, you know, looking through, trying to find where on U2401, where the heck is E7 and where does it go? And a lot of the times, if you replace the ship before, you know, a ton of these pads are NC or not connected. E7 just happens to be one of them, as you can see right here. <coughs> and that's, you know, a pain in the ass to, look, to try to hunt down which pad it is and, you know, orient yourself on the board, figure out which one's A1. Well, the great thing with the DXW tool is that it actually builds the function right in. So, there's this top left-hand corner, you can see this NC button. That means, that tells you exactly where all the nut NC pads on the board are. So, if you hit the, click that, or if you hit the N key on your keyboard, it highlights every single NC pad on the board, and that's just awesome. So now there's no longer any hunting over. You can just look at your board under your microscope. You can see, oh, this whole area looks like it's blue on the ZXW tool. Looks like I don't need it. It's NC. Well, that saves a lot of time. That saves a lot of trouble, and that, you know, takes all the risk out of uh, having to run jumpers and wasting time and, you know, screaming at your computer or at the board, why the heck did you do this to me, Apple? Why the heck did you do this to me? So, that's a pretty awesome feature, and that's, a, that's one of the perks of uh, ZXW tool compared to something like uh, the PDF viewer, which if, for example, if I was to look at U2401 on the board view on the PDF, so let me zoom out, U2401, yeah, that's not really helpful at all. That's pretty much bunk. So, that's, uh, if you do BGA rework, I highly recommend this tool for stuff like that. Um, another quick thing that I, that I really like is if you right click and you go to show hidden number, you can actually select part image. This is just a little perk. It shows you what all the chips look like. So there's your backlight driver there, your, uh, your front camera connector, LCD connector, processor, stuff like that. That's pretty cool. And, you know, that comes in handy sometimes. There's just fun perks. So, but where does this really come in handy? Um, one of the things I discovered recently is hunting down shorts on boards. Uh, I recently had an iPhone 6 with a short on the backlight rail. And conventionally, if I had a short on the backlight rail, I would go ahead and search up the backlight rail on the schematic. LCM, uh, backlight, anode. I don't even know if that's right. Is it? Oh, it is. Okay, perfect. And that means... Alright, so now I have to hunt down every single component on this rail in the schematic that can possibly short itself to ground. So, stuff like these caps have one pad on ground, one cap on, uh, one pad on the rail. Um, this backlight driver could possibly be short to ground, and that would mean a lot of... Alright, okay, let's hunt down C1513. Let's see where on the board view is C1513 so I can look on the, under the microscope and figure out where the heck uh, if, that, if, if that component needs to be replaced or not. And so I would say, all right, um, C1513 is right here below the backlight driver next to the diode. Go onto the microscope, remove that. Uh, short is still there. All right, let's go back. LCM backlight anode, C1530. Now go scroll all the way to the top. You know, wasting all this time scrolling, 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 hunting down all these caps, all the, everything on the thing. And sometimes even like these these components aren't even on the same page, like. I'm sure if I search more, yeah, it'll show up here. C2017 is another page I'd have to look at and hunt on that cap. And that's a lot of wasted time when you could be, you know, working on boards and making money. So ZXW tool really alleviates that because it builds in a net function. Net means that you can search on all the, the nets of the schematic. In this case, something like PP, LCM, backlight, anode. That's a net. So to do so, you could either... Uh, if you click a component like this, this is, remember our backlight filter, FL2024? If you click one of the ends of that, it'll tell you PPLCM backlight anode is on that, uh, is part of that component. And the other side, PPLCM backlight anode connector, um, where did you go? Like, like that. That tells you that you can see the net name. And what's also really cool is it'll even show you where it goes to. So that would go to this cap and then to the LCD connector finally. So if I wanted to hunt down every single component really fast on that rail, you can actually go down here to this drop down menu and you can type either select it or you can type in PP 
LCM, backlight, anode, and hit, and find it here, and hit, select it, and now you can see it's highlighted every single component, all these caps, C1530 is right there, all these caps are automatically highlighted, and it tells you all of those are on that PP LCM backlight anode rail, and all of those could potentially be causing a short to ground. So, and that makes it a lot easier because there's no longer any searching on the schematic, you know, going through multiple pages trying to find all the components that could uh, that are on that rail. Now it's all just one click, and now you can see one, two, three, four, five. All of those could uh, could potentially go to ground. This diode doesn't go to ground because it goes to the backlight driver and the and the coil, and so that's not something that would be causing a short. But all these caps, C1530, 1531, 1505, all of those, now you can quickly check those out on your microscope and make a uh, start removing them and troubleshoot your short a lot faster. And so that that's really just like a really awesome thing that uh, ZXW is really good at uh, making uh, making our work easier in terms of board repair. So this is pretty much you know a good overview of ZXW tool, why I highly recommend it, what it's good for, what it does. Um, if you want to get it, you can go to our website, microsolderingsupply.com, and you can search for the ZXW tool. Uh, it'll load up. Yeah, you can just go ahead and search ZXW, uh, and I'll probably drop a link in the description for you. You can go ahead.